1960 campaign and election coverage by WHAS television recalls the Kentuckiana visit of President Eisenhower in 1954 in support of the Republican candidates of that year and the campaign in which Alvin Barkley was opposed by the non-incumbent John Sherman Cooper. CBS News commentator Eric Severide moderated the Barkley-Cooper debate in WHAS studios, later presenting film portions of the event on the national cable. Our cameras cover the flying visits of Richard Nixon and President John Kennedy as their far-ranging campaigns brought them to Louisville, a season in which Senator Cooper met opponent Keen Johnson in the great Kentucky debate in this studio. Right from the very beginning, WHAS television is produced what the networks choose to call specials. One-time programs or series built around a single theme and dedicated to public affairs. Back on April 22, 1952, you may have watched General Hospital Surgeons performing a lung removal in the first televised operation of its kind on Operation Cancer. There's a question as to whether the uh, upper lobe of the lung should be removed or whether the entire lung should be removed. The report has now been brought back confirming the suspected diagnosis of cancer of the lung. And the operating surgeon, after further study of the lesion, has decided to remove the entire right lung. Eight years later, our cameras were set up in an operating room in Children's Hospital to view the open heart operation of five-year-old Gussie Snyder of Ashland, Kentucky. Other live WHAS TV specials have included the Sydney Hearth Music is Fun series, annual coverage of the Kentucky State Fair, and a 1955 coverage of the Junior Chamber of Commerce Banquet with guest speaker Edward R. Murrow. That spring saw Kentuckiana Aviation documented by the 13-week flight plan, a series of 15-minute programs reporting on such phases as commercial airlines, pilot instruction, air safety, the Civil Air Patrol, and the Air National Guard. Our XMD presented the story of the family doctor, as represented by Louisville physician Dr. Richard Slusher, later president of the Kentucky General Practitioners. In 1959, the Kentucky Department of Economic Security presented the qualifications of eight unemployed persons each week on Opportunity Wanted. And in 1958, Milton Metz parlayed an eight-part series of programs on highway, traffic, and pedestrian safety into the award-winning Spotlight Show. Now, listen to this. Sir, sorry, Dick Lavity reports pay, sir. $157, verify your pay. This is the pay line of the biggest single industry in the Kentuckiana area. Payday for more than 51,000 men and women who receive about $10 million every month. Other government spending here totals over $100 million sure, annually. Sergeant, During 1960, Channel 11 charted the course of this impact on the Louisville economy in a series of seven documentary programs. Turning from the big subjects now to small talk, it was in 1956 that Mary Snow Etheridge turned over that popular show to Phyllis Knight. In nine years, these two have had small talk with literally thousands of guests Places ranging from helicopters and jet airplanes to rooftops, racetracks, and fairgrounds all over town. The following year, Phyllis won the coveted McCall's Magazine Golden Mike Award as the outstanding woman broadcaster of 1957 for her three-month campaign on behalf of cancer tests for Kentuckiana women. And in 1958, 40,000 entries poured in to name the little guy with the 11 in his eyes. And Fisbee was christened. Louisville's reputation as a cultural center has not gone unnoticed. In addition to Channel 11 attention to the Louisville Dance Council, the Opera Association and Arts Center, and the Louisville Fund, the Louisville Adventure Series and WHAS reports have produced some memorable occasions, 
such as these half-hour rehearsal sessions of the Louisville Orchestra, conducted by Robert Whitney. Over these 11 years, the tracks, courts, and playing fields of Kentuckiana sports have come in for their share of our coverage. And here is WHAS sports director, Kaywood Ledford, with a rundown of those top sports stories. There's been a wealth of thrills and excitement and top stories, too, in the world of sports these past 11 years. WHAS-TV has been a part of Kentuckiana sports scene. One of the first big national sports stories to break on the Kentuckiana scene after the advent of Channel 11 was the Davis Cup matches played at the Louisville Boat Club in 1955. Vic Satius and Tony Trabert representing the United States against an all-star contingent from Brazil. The drawing for the matches was held here on WHAS and by special film reports like this one, tennis fans were able to follow the Davis Cup matches. Much older than our 11 years, the Louisville Colonel in our short span of history, the local baseball team has gone from ownership by the Boston Red Sox to a Cuban group to community ownership and three years ago was taken over by the Milwaukee Braves. In that time, an American Association pennant and last season, the Junior World Series Championship that we're watching right now. Two bowl games for the Kentucky Wildcats in these last 11 years and the annual season finale against Tennessee has taken a reversal of form. Kentucky defeated the Volunteers in 1953, since then has lost only once to Tennessee. The Wildcats claimed the Sugar Bowl title in 1951, and the following year, the Cotton Bowl Championship. In 1957, the Louisville Cardinal won the Sun Bowl title from Drake University. It was the first bowl start, and a big one, for the Redbirds. In boxing, over these past 11 years, Louisville has had two standouts. Rudell Stitch on the brink of a championship bout when the Louisville belter was drowned trying to save a friend last summer. Amateur fighter Cassius Clay returned from the Olympics in Rome last summer with a gold medal for his light heavyweight championship. Cassius since then has turned professional and is still undefeated as a fighter. Another Olympic gold medal winner, Wilma Rudolph, headlined the first Mason-Dixon track meet this past winter. Almost 10,000 spectators turned out for the first indoor meet held at Freedom Hall, and Miss Rudolph obliged with a new indoor track record for the 70-yard dash. The sponsoring center club almost eliminated their debt on the very first meet, and the Mason-Dixon games seem to have made a permanent place for themselves on the Kentuckiana sports scene. But track only made a temporary inroad on the Kentuckiana sports pages. The major sport is still basketball. In 1956, the Louisville Cardinals won the National Invitational Championship to arrive as a major basketball power. In 1958, the Kentucky Wildcats captured the NCAA crown for the fourth time a record. This past week, both teams, along with Moorhead, made it into the NCAA Mideast Regional Tournament. But a Buckeye team, Ohio State, came away with the laurels. The Bucks barely edged Louisville 56 to 55, then Mall, Kentucky, 87 to 74. In high school basketball, St. X and Flage picked off Kentucky State titles over the past four years, but this year it was Ashland, making it to an easy win in the Sweet 16. And last week, Kokomo, after an overtime, was crowned the king of Hoosier high school basketball over Indianapolis Manning. Overall, as usual, this has been a banner decade in Kentuckiana basketball. But in the Bluegrass State, the Kentucky Derby is still the thing. And the first Saturday every May, over 100,000 turf fans turn out for the famous Run for the Roses. Seen on WHAS-TV, the 1953 winner was Dark Star, handing Native Dancer his only career defeat. 
1954 determined the first California bred to win the Kentucky Derby romped home. In 1955, the upset win swaps over Nashua. In 1956, Needles' big run from the rear to win. In 57, Calumet with Iron Lee. In 1958, Calumet again, Tim Tam the winner. And in 1959, Tommy Lee, Edge Sword Dancer that we're watching now. And in 1960, the 86th run for the Roses, Venetian Way, was the Kentucky Derby champion. Well, these were just a few of the sports highlights over these past 11 years. But then, as now, where the top stories in sports have broken, WHAS-TV has been on top of the action.